Thank you, uh, Professor Nagishi, for your wonderful lecture. Now we may have one or two questions from the audience. So, particularly still, even we are working here on um, this cross covering reactions in our lab. Actually, what suggestion can you give that is uh, particularly handling sp3 hybridized chlorine and activation of the sp3 hybridized carbon containing chloride, chlorine. that is chlorine, chlorine, chlorine for cross covering reaction. This is a very tough reaction and uh, difficult to get palladium catalyst difficult to get very tight, different type of liquids that are available in the market. However, it gives uh, really, and uh, very difficult to stop with the hydride elimination. Side product. Sir, man. yeah, I have. <laughs> That's a particular uh, special topic, so I, have, I haven't had, you know, uh, seriously dealt with it. Yeah. So, it's now it's very clear to me that you you know much better than I do, and uh, of course, in relative order, you know, I can I can really appreciate that the core which we have kind of avoided, <laughs> and uh, we avoided, but uh, with the notion that uh, we favor the organic synthetic part, and uh, in in uh, synthesizing complex organic molecules. That's where most of the money is. <laughs> so, uh, beta reactions, it, uh, even though transition metals are expensive, but the catalyst, as a catalyst, they turn over. We can turn them over a million times easily. We don't do that in six, 10 to the six, as needed. And uh, maybe uh, one, 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 one more. And my pharmaceutical company friends, and I may, as I may have already told you, if you can go up to seven, nine, you know, uh, ninety-nine point uh, small amount of impurity may usually cease to be to. It, it cause any serious problem, like a thalidomide issue and so on. So seven nines is uh, their target, but we we don't want to, in each and every case, we can do that, but uh, we don't want to uh, seek that level in each of our experiments. But we claim, uh, uh, so, Four nine, four to five nines, and then we are happy. And uh, we believe that uh, with that, with those results, if we are asked to go up to six nines and seven nines, we, which we have done, we can all. All we need to do is just extra efforts, not necessarily the extra amount of uh, uh, palladium catalyst. So, what was your question? <laughs> Right. Ah, right. Yeah, okay. So, so looking back, I must confess that uh, in, in, in general, we have uh, avoided fluoride or chloride because our interest has been to, uh, in organic synthesis, organic synthesis and uh, getting the target organic, desired organic target molecule as efficiently and as economically as possible. And using a, some seemingly economical chlorine or less reactive fluorine, they don't help our, our goals, you know, our activity. So we have outright pretty much excluded after the initial screening. But uh, I realize that in many other situations, uh, they, they may be 
they may be desirable, necessarily. Yeah, because we go normally in oligene synthesis followed by reduction. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we may have many more questions, but in the interest of time, we would like to now acknowledge the great lecture that uh, Professor Nagashi has delivered. He has demonstrated immaculate control, remote control of even the chirality using isotopomers, and that is from very far from the chiral center by demonstrating different forms of substrate that he has chosen over the years. And please join me in thanking Professor Nagashi for this wonderful <laughs> and thank you, uh, Professor Bhattacharya. I would now like to request our director to please felicitate our honorable speaker. <coughs> it's a model Raman spectrograph that has been handed over to our uh, guest. session we would like you all to join us for tea right outside the auditorium. Thank you for your attention.
210 on Bazaar Street. Father Lafon of Sazenius College helped Michelin to organize IACS. J.C. Rose shifted to Presidency College and Ashutosh Mukherjee went to Mathematics and research did not take at IACS. His last address written from his death bed, he wrote, If our country is to advance and take rank with the civilized nations, it can only be by means of science. To this end, I have given the best portion of my life. But I'm sorry to leave this world with the impression that my labor has not met with the success it deserves. Sidi Raman was born in Tamil Nadu on 2nd of November 1888. Raman also stood first in Indian financial service examination. In 1907, three years after Mohandralal's death, C.B. Raman came to Calcutta. Initially, Raman worked on acoustics, particularly Indian musical instruments. He started working on Brahman effect from 1923. He did not have any equipment. He approached G.D. Vivla for money to buy a spectrograph. Raman sent his paper by telegram to Nature on 16th of February 1928. He was awarded the 1913 Nobel Prize in Physics. People continue with fast legacy. ISS continues to pursue research in frontier areas of science and technology. Extra theories or extra models beyond what is the standard model. Supersymmetry 
a extra dimension as such scenarios where you can have light waves in photons. In addition to this problem, we also know from neutrino oscillation experiment that neutrinos are massive. And from cosmology, we know there is a large chunk of matter which is dark. So supersymmetry, large extra dimension, and also like light to see some model right. and different or its models, they predict massive neutrinos as well as some extensions of CISO model also predict dark. So in this area, our group is actively working. So in Latinx theory, what we primarily do is instead of the continuum space time, we actually discretize space time to a four dimensional lattice. And that we want to use both the infrared and the ultraviolet divergences of the underlying quantum field theory. So in this area, we have been working on developing new algorithms for more efficient simulation techniques. And one of the highlights that we managed to first compute the diffusion coefficient of the non pure plasma and we are now actively involving in developing new algorithms like the rational light in Monte Carlo, etc. So here we are on the in front of the grey supercomputer and on my left you can see two cabinets. The one on the further side is the compute cabinet and the one which is closer to us is the this cabinet which consists of a parallel last year file system. Most interesting aspect of this compute node is that these are hybrid compute nodes, some having two CPUs and some having one CPU and one GPU. Each card giving you about one teraflop of computing power and this comes at about one tenth of the price and energy consumption. Nowadays, for high performance supercomputing, you need about two megawatts of power for each petaflop of computing power. Current technology cannot be used extrapolate to the exaflop scale and here at IECS we are actively developing algorithms and new programming paradigms for effectively exploiting the power of this graphical processing unit. So we are going to have a small informal discussion about the areas of research and the focus of physical chemistry. It's a very important uh, question. But if you look at this our department, the department of the physical chemistry, although that we need to uh, depend very much on this technology. But somehow we try to maintain both in terms of this theory and experiment what is happening at this global level. So if you look at this research in this department, particularly in the 80s and 90s, mostly this high resolution spectroscopy of the small molecules at low temperature, that was the focus. With the change of the time, now for the people are trying to study more complex systems. This complex system, not necessarily that the system has to be very big, but even the small molecules, when we go to these very high energy levels, the systems will have this complex. So in that sense, this non-adiotic reaction dynamics of these small molecular clusters, the study of the clusters at the low temperature, and also about the dynamics that is happening at the cellular level, and also to see that the process that is happening exactly at this molecular level, that is what is called the single molecular spectroscopy, and the single molecular dynamics, that is also has become a fashion of this day, and ICS is going at mark with this global trend. But we take this in very serious. We have an integrated program in chemical science here, by the Department of Physical Chemistry, particularly the faculty, take very intense interest in it because this is our responsibility, of course, to nurture this young generation so that they can, they can maintain the trend of the research, not only at this institute, but particularly this region of the country. So, this is what I can say. Often takes decades before the commercial implications of an important scientific discovery. I will give you an example from our own institute where the Raman effect was invented at ICS in the 1920s. Its Nobel Prize in winning inventor, Sir C. B. Raman, did not have the remotest idea that the scientific principles he invented would be used later to perform ultra operating brain cancer detection with Brahman spectroscopy implements. <clears throat> the commercial potential of a particular discovery is often unanticipated and often extends to many unrelated industries and applications as well as the case of There are numerous examples in science that I want to give you one of the problems. We just want to know what to do in a soft matter. A soft matter is a special type of condensed matter which continues of various physical states that can be different.